So we know how the handle, the path of the handle should be moving in a certain direction. It's obviously very important that we start training up the right muscles to be using at the right time. So let's just go through those, please let me superficially. So if I'm sitting here and I want to get some movement of the seat backwards and some resistance in the handle, let's just think about the major muscles that we use. Well, the quads, the, the thigh muscles here, from this point here, if I fire my quads, that happens. My leg rises, okay? Which is not a particularly effective way of moving the seat. However, my glutes, my butt, they sort of come round to the, the side of my femur here and they pull my femur down, okay? Much more effective at getting power. So these strong muscles, they work quite slowly, but they're much stronger. And they're the ones that we need to learn how to engage. If we don't think about it, if we don't train these muscles, if we don't activate these muscles, then we tend to depend too much on our quads, which are not necessarily the best ones to be using. So the big driving force comes from the butt, enhanced as they are by the quads, okay? So the other thing is how do we actually make sure that we start the stroke in the right sort of way? And that's something which is important to understand. The main application of this is that in the boat, we place the blades, we load our back, and because the water is moving almost sideways at that point there, it's pretty instantaneous that we feel resistance. We load our back, we can drive with our legs. But we don't want to waste seat movements, i.e. glute application, while we are just loading the, the resistance in the handle. So we load our backs first, get the resistance there, and then drive with the legs. So I'm encouraging people to stay stationary until they can feel that load on their backs and then drive with the legs. It's quite precise, it's quite deliberate with beginners that I ask them to sit still as they place the blade, and as they become more proficient, they remain still as they're loading their backs and driving with their legs. Obviously, the tendency would be to place the blade and find themselves slipping backwards. But any movement of the legs, any movement of the seat is wasted effort if there isn't resistance involved. So the longer the resistance, the more work you can apply, the more propulsion you get into the boat. So it's placing the blade, loading the back, driving with the legs, opening up the body as the handle speed increases and requires it. And at the end, when we break our arms, when the arms break, whether in a single sweep or thing or a double, you're not gonna get much more propulsion. The arms do not really propel the boat. By the time that the arms are breaking, the handle, of the, sorry, the angle of the, the blade is somewhere like this. And if you look from above, at this point here, the spoon is cutting into the water. It's cutting into that wall of resistance that it's built up at the beginning of the stroke and naturally the wall tends to break down so if we try and do what is quite second nature to us which is try and really pull those what they call finishes try and work those propulsive finishes we're going to tend to just break that wall down create foam and not propel the boat any further so it's it's my opinion that you should consider the arms as a good way of negotiating a clean extraction rather than anything to propel the boat. And I would advise against trying to achieve anything with the arms which you haven't already achieved with the rest of the body. So the idea of big finishes and send them away, the whole delivery of that sort of instruction, that sort of command, to me I think is unhelpful in doing something much more important, which is getting the blades clean out of the water at the right time.